here it is. It's real. So now you may be wondering, why did you make this? And the answer to that question is simple. It's because whenever you look up my Sakurajima phone case, as I did, you get stuff like this. Now yes, these are technically my Sakurajima phone cases, but what the fuck is this? Her phone case is pink and has bunny ears. Is that seriously the best I can come up with? I thought to myself. So in an effort to show these cheap phone case manufacturers what my Sakurajima's phone case actually looks like, what the fuck is that? I decided to make my own. But first, we will need a plan. First off, I will need to make a mold of the phone case. Then pour some kind of liquid inside that will harden into some kind of soft, squishy rubber. Then I'll just have to take it out and voila, perfect phone case. But as you can probably tell, that plan is far too simple and easy to work right the first time. So first I start off with my mold. Like, how to actually make a mold of my phone in a way that will actually fit my phone and not take forever to make by hand. Next I'd actually have to get my hands on whatever I needed to make the mold. So now what? Well for the mold, I found this 3D model on my phone online. So I downloaded that and got to work making a larger mold in which the smaller phone can be laid within and where the liquid could then be poured into to make the phone case. Okay, great, but I actually don't have a 3D printer, and I'm not going to spend triple digits on a 3D printer just for a one-off project. But it was then that I remembered that my city's libraries actually have a service where they 3D print anything you want for a price that's not free. So I looked up the closest library that offers a service and biked my way there. It took an hour, but I finally made it. This was going to be super easy. I thought, until I actually showed up and realized that the full 3D model can't actually fit on the print base of the 3D printer. Okay, that's fine, I'll just get the normal phone model printed while I can think of a solution for the larger model. Oh wait, the print turned out like sh Yeah, so it doesn't look like the printer liked my model, maybe because it's not manifold, whatever that means. The librarian suggested that I just split apart the mold into the phone and the ears, which I'll do, but that means I'll have to refine my plan a bit. Okay, so what if I actually cast the ears normally and then just use my phone's case to make the die? That way I don't have to make a larger model or anything. Now I'll just print everything out with supports, and there we go, it looks great. With these, I can finally start making my mold. So I went to the art supply store and found the cheapest modeling clay I can get my hands on, and made the mold and let it dry out overnight. So it's been a day, and look what happened. What happened to you? Why? Why is it all cracked? I, I mean, I guess, you know, lesson learned. Don't get the cheapest clay on the shelf, but I mean... Well, for some reason, that didn't work. Okay, whatever, I'll just get some other clay. That should work, right? There we go. Okay, so now it's time to find out a thing or two about casting materials. Oh, man. So, to make a long, long story short, I decided that I would use liquid silicone rubber to make this phone case. Despite the fact that the LSR I used for this project was supposed to be for the mold itself, I decided to cast with it anyways because it should work, right? I spent a long time looking around at different silicone rubbers from lots of different companies and an equally long time looking at pigments to use. And I originally decided just to buy whatever was recommended on Amazon and go to my local sculpture shop to get some pigment. But when I finally arrived at my local sculpture shop, I found this particular rubber that was already colored pink and was cheaper than the rubber and pigment that I was going to buy. So I had to talk to the guy at the store and I bought myself some Smooth Sill 940. Apparently it's food safe too, which is a bonus. And uh, yeah, we don't have any of those wooden mixing sticks that you can get at the hardware store. Uh, so I'm going to be using the chopsticks that I got last time I ordered sushi. Now came time to mix up the rubber and cast it into the dye. But I made too little. So I mixed a bit more. And then a bit more. And that still wasn't enough, so I poured one more. And by the end, the phone case was already four different shades of pink when I called it quits for the night. And this was what awaited me in the morning. For starters, the place that I was casting everything wasn't level, so the liquid silicone shifted unevenly around the mold. I also needed to make about two and a half times the amount of rubber I originally thought. And lastly, the rubber just wasn't sturdy enough to hold the flimsy ears upright. And because the dummy phone was made out of plastic, it floated in the liquid silicone rubber, ruining the mold anyways. So I had to think of something else. This time I'm going to cast it on level ground like I freaking should have done from the start. And I'm going to put some wires in the mold to keep the ears upright. And I'm going to anchor the dummy phone to the bottom of the mold to keep it in place. So let's see how this goes. Well, it's better than last time, but the case still doesn't keep the phone inside of it. I think I'm going to have to get a sturdier rubber or something. 
So I went looking around and found Vitaflex 40, which is as strong as I originally wanted it to be. But then when I went to the store, it seemed a bit too soft, so I went for Vitaflex 60 instead. But because this wasn't pink on its own, I had to buy this urethane rubber pigment. And because it was urethane rubber instead of silicone rubber, I also had to buy the spray-on release agent so it wouldn't stick to everything. So I came home and casted it, and this is what came out. It is super hard compared to the first one, which is better, I suppose. But the color is a bit too dark, and the pork cutouts just look terrible. And the ears still have bubble holes in them. So, I had a plan. All I would need to do is make the ultimate mold to cast this next one in. So that's exactly what I did. For this mold, I pulled out all the stops. I made sure it was exactly level, made the edges perfectly straight. I cut a piece of paper in the exact size I wanted this phone case to be. And I made a placeholder for the charging and camera hole so I wouldn't have to cut them out. I made an image of my reference material. I made the background the average color between several shots of my phone case just to make sure the color was spot on. This was going to be it. And it still wasn't perfect. There were still bubble holes in the ears, though it was smaller, and I had to do some cutting to make the camera on portholes bigger which made it look pretty bad from the outside. And I also messed up cutting some of the sprue from the ears, which accidentally made one shorter than the other. So I made another one quickly and just hoped for the best. At the very least, I hoped I could Frankenstein the two together to make one decent one. Well, it seemed as if I wouldn't have to do any of that. My beginner's luck came through and this one turned out perfectly. There were no bubble holes, flat enough edges, and it was the right color. I took this home to trim off the sprue from the edges and wash it up, and this is what I came up with. This is the final version. My phone case has finally been realized into the real world. It's a one of one, and it definitely has a more artisan look to it, to say the least. While there's still lots of little spurry bits, and the front could be cut better, and the edges aren't perfectly flat, I think it's the best that I could reasonably do. I'm certain that an engineer, modeler, or sculptor with all the right tools and knowledge and the foam measurements could do a way better job than I could, but as a non-engineer making this out of modeling clay and off-the-shelf rubber in his basement, I think it came out all right. If you want to try making one for yourself, I've left a model for the ears down in the description. Just find a model of your phone online and print that along with the ears. I'll also link to the OnePlus 7 Pro model I used in the description too. For those who are thinking about making this yourselves, here are some things that I've learned that might help you. Always pick a rubber that's harder than you think you'll need. Don't just look at the squishiness, look at how flexible it is. Design your mold so you'll need to do as little cutting as possible. Make sure all the holes are filled by the mold itself. And if you have any problems 3D printing a 3D model, print with supports on and just let it run its course. Sure, it's not the pro way to do it, but it does get the job done. And also just try watching some professional sculptors or modelers on YouTube to see what tricks they have. I know I learned a lot just by watching them. Okay, surprise phone case review. As an actual phone case, it's pretty cumbersome. It doesn't feel like a phone in a case as much as it does a rugged piece of field equipment. The ears wiggle while you're texting something, and I'm pretty sure this could survive any drop test given the sound it makes. I'm not gonna drop test this phone. This is my actual daily driver phone in there, so I'm not doing it. It also smells. It has like this... It's been two weeks now and has this terrible like rubber smell to it. I have no idea how to get rid of it. This is also way too big. My phone case is tiny. My phone is freaking enormous. And put that in an equally enormous case, and this is impossible to put in your pocket. If you do put this in your pocket, the ears are just going to be visible from the outside because you can't possibly fit this entire thing in any pocket. I also made a mistake while putting the camera cutout on the mold. The, the case kind of covers the flashlight. It's a bit too low, so the flashlight kind of gets covered. It still technically works, but now it's a lot more pink and a lot more dim. As an actual phone case, I don't think anyone could actually use this. It's a nice novelty, but I actually cannot use this. To close off this video, I want to show you this photo that I took while I was working as a co-op student at my local school. Just know that I went through all of these stages while working on this project. When I had the idea for this just over two years ago, I was thrilled. And I was honestly excited to get started. But my enthusiasm went down with every single prototype that I made. They never quite came out like I envisioned them to be. And I was always wondering if it was worth spending another hour to make another mold, or if I should just leave it. But in the end, with this project over and done with, I can finally say that I've reached the end of that graph. It's done, and it sucks, but not as bad as I thought. And yes, I know that the camera cutout isn't exactly like Mai's, but her phone is ancient anyways. Look, it even has a home button, so I figured that I would need to take some creative liberties to bring your phone into the 2020s. P.S. I just got back from an anime convention. Thank you to all the Mai Sakurajima cosplayers who posed whilst holding this phone case in their hands. And especially a big thank you to the cosplayer who asked me where I bought it from. <laughs>
If you are planning on making one yourself, just know that the color of my phone case faded from a pink to more of a salmon color due to the sunlight. So maybe I should make another one? I don't know. But regardless, I thought it was worth mentioning. Anyways, take care everyone.